Hello, everybody. Welcome. I am so excited that you guys are all here for our class today on the internal use of essential oils. I wanted to do a quick shout out. We've had a lot of new people join our Learning with Dr. Laura Facebook group. So I wanted to thank you guys so much for being here. I really appreciate it and do a quick intro if I'm new to any of you guys that are just starting out here. I am Dr. Laura Ritchie. So I am a doctor of physical therapy and national board certified health and wellness coach specializing in functional nutrition, women's health and insulin resistance. And I'm an essential oil educator and leader with doTERRA International. And thank you for being here. If you're watching the replay, welcome to the replay. We have a giveaway for a US viewer that's watching us. So stay tuned on all the details on how to win. We're gonna announce that at the end of the class. And this is gonna be an interactive workshop. So I really encourage you grab a pen and paper, grab something to drink, get you some water, some nice tea, and turn off all those notifications, silence your cell phone, go to a quiet place so that we can really dive into this. This is a controversial topic, right? This is something that I get asked a lot about. Oh, good. I'm seeing you guys pop on. Good. Yeah. Let me know in the comments if you guys can hear me okay. We're streaming on Facebook and on Zoom here. And again, we want to keep this a good vibes only space. So inappropriate or mean spirited comments, those are going to be removed from the group. And I really do want to ask if you will hold your questions until the end, because we have a lot to cover in this short time together. And I want to share as much information as I can with you. And I also think that the information as we go through is going to help you to answer any questions that you might have coming up there. So I want to make sure you guys can hear me real fast. And it looks like you can. It's so wonderful to see all of you lovely faces joining us this morning. Oh my gosh, are you ready? Are you guys ready to dive in? Okay, let's do it. So I'm going to share my screen. I have a fun PowerPoint for you guys. I don't always do this, but this is a topic that deserved it, right? So we're going to dive in deep. And this is our internal use of essential oils class. And before we begin, I always like to start with this. Again, this information, it's not intended to replace a one-on-one -on -one relationship with your qualified healthcare professional, and it's not intended as medical advice. This is intended as me sharing knowledge and information for my own personal research, experience, training, and I really encourage you guys to make these decisions in partnership with your qualified healthcare professional and do your own research with this, right? It's so important. Okay, this is a little bit about my journey, and I want to share this with you. It's a little bit raw and authentic and real, but it lets you know where I'm coming from. So again, my doctorate's in physical therapy. I was a physical therapist for five years working in the clinic, so I've been both on the practitioner side as well as the patient side, and this is my journey. In 2011, I was diagnosed with an extremely rare sarcoma called a desmoid tumor about Two to four out of a million people get these. They're very rare. The cause is unknown. And that is my desmoid tumor in the top center, actually named my tumor Harold. Harold was in my abdominal wall in that six-pack mu muscle, right? The rectus abdominis muscle on the left side was the size of a softball. And you can see it there on the CT scan. So it was removed. And then a year later, the synthetic mesh that they had put in me herniated. And so I underwent a complete abdominal wall reconstruction. Long story short, there was four surgeries related around this sarcoma. You can see on that bottom right-hand side, the drains that were coming out of me. I'd actually lost 20, 25 pounds from what I am now. It was a really challenging time in my 20s to be diagnosed with a rare cancer. In 2015, I was diagnosed with adult hip dysplasia. And this was, again, a, a challenging road where I had some major surgeries, bigger than hip replacement surgeries where they broke my pelvis, they repositioned it to give me better coverage and then put some large screws in to hold all of that in place. And then 2015, I was diagnosed with chronic Lyme disease. So this has been a journey. You guys can see the rashes on my hands. Actually, interestingly enough, the top right hand picture is a rash, a co-infection of Lyme called Bartonella. You can also see that on my back. I would get these very painful large rashes that would cover large areas of my body and just changing my nutrition, just nutritional changes, took me from the rash on the top picture there 
just the difference in my hands. I, after I would take a shower or a bath, it would get really red. My joints would get inflamed and be hurting. And the nutritional piece made a big difference to me. And this journey, right, and I did different IV infusions of high-dose vitamin C, B vitamins, magnesium, kind of a Myers cocktail, if you will. And again, I just share this so that you know where I'm coming from in my personal journey. This is the road that brought me to the place of functional nutrition and holistic health and healing and integrative medicine and also essential oils. And I say that because we've all been through challenging times, right? And it's very different when you are a patient versus when you are a practitioner. So this is the space and what actually brought me into doing the work that I do and becoming a certified women's health and functional nutrition coach and doing the work that I do with doTERRA and educating about essential oils. So why would we use oils internally? There are several reasons. They can actually promote cellular function. They can help to support gastrointestinal health. They can help to maintain healthy immune function, also have some internal cleansing benefits with that, and then obtain antioxidants to protect against those free radicals, can help to calm or support the nervous system, and add flavor to our food and beverages. So there's a lot of reasons why you might be open to trying an oil internally. And then this is a hot topic too, right? Is it safe? Is it safe to use oils internally? Because there's a lot on the internet that you're gonna find around. There's a lot of fear around internal use of essential oils. And so my answer is yes and no, because quality really matters. Quality, purity, sourcing, where are these oils coming from? Where and how was that plant grown? have these oils been tested by third-party testing? Because guys, unfortunately, there is no regulatory body that is overseeing the production of essential oils. And there is not a universal standard governing essential oil usage and protocols. So the burden is really left onto the consumer to decide what is real, what is not, what's the testing, what's the purity there. And a proper chemical profile is really important in addition to being free of any of those impurities or adulterations. So again, an essential oil is only going to be as good as its chemistry. Many essential oils are found on the FDA's generally recommended as safe or grass list that approves oils for internal use as non-medical constituents. So not all essential oils are safe for internal use. There are actually some oils that we never want to take internally. And an example of that is wintergreen essential oil which is most beneficial use topically. And you'll notice that doTERRA's wintergreen or the deep blue blend, which has wintergreen in it, has a child safety cap on it for that reason. Okay, so not all essential oils are safe for internal use. Quality and purity matter. And there's some like, for example, wintergreen and a couple others that we're gonna talk about that you never wanna take internally. So this is very important, source to you. If you guys haven't checked out this website, I highly recommend that you do. Do your own research. You can read a lot about this. Now I'm gonna do a quick screen share here to show you a little bit about source to you and show you how cool it is that we can actually look up and see what's in our specific bottle of oil. So this is the website, again, it's source to you.com. And you can actually, if you scroll down here, it's pretty cool. You can read more about the growers, the distillers, the scientists, the practitioners, all kinds of things that go into the heart of doTERRA and the oils. But what I wanted to show you guys is this quality reports button. So if you click there, you can actually, at the bottom of your bottle of essential oils, a little code. And you can type in that code, and I've already done it actually for this bottle of peppermint oil that I have right here in my hands. This is the code here. It's 1815211 on the bottom of my bottle of oil. And it will pull up my batch. And you can click on the test results. And this is so cool, guys. I don't see anybody else doing this full transparency with their essential oils and their testing. And it is going to show you that this was third party tested by Aromatic Plant Research Center. You can see, and this is for my batch of oil. How cool is this? And then you can see here, this is the peppermint oil. You can see the different testing. You can see all of the things here that are going on. And it says here at the very bottom, the analysis of peppermint is revealed, peppermint lot revealed no contaminants or adulteration. Boom. 
Very, very cool. Full transparency with your oils. So I would say if you're using an essential oil, reach out to that company, do your research, look on those labels, see what's going on with that. Because again, not all essential oils are created equally. And this is really important to understand, especially as us as consumers, that we make sure that what we're using in on our body, in our home, on our children, that that is safe and that that is pure. So I had to show you guys that because it's a key piece of making sure that what we're using is really what we think it is. Because again, there is no governing agency that's regulating that, so people can put whatever they want on that label. Now, I just attended doTERRA's leadership retreat, and this was in Atlanta, and these slides were shared with us, and I thought this was really interesting and wanted to add it in, that there are actually 54 tests that are completed on each sample of doTERRA's oils. 43 of those are done in-house through doTERRA, through doTERRA's labs, their research facilities, and then 11 are actually done through a third-party testing center called APRC. And you can see here, these are a bunch of different things that they're testing. They're looking for total plate count, the viscosity, they're checking for heavy metals, they're looking at a bunch of different things regarding our essential oils to make sure that they are truly pure. So again, reach out to those people, do your research, and find a company that has full transparency that you jive with. This was another interesting slide that the typical process of oils coming to the market this is what usually happens. You can see it goes from the farmer to the distiller, and then there's, there's brokers, there's middlemen in here, right? There's perfumists, there's things coming in, then it's going to the company, and then it's then going to the consumer. So there's a lot of middlemen. When we're using brokers, we don't know if something is lost in translation there. We don't know if something is getting adulterated or what's happening. This is what happens with your doTERRA oils, is it's straight from the farmer to the distiller, to doTERRA, to that third-party testing, to you, to your home. Very interesting. So safety matters. Not all essential oils are created equal. Oils have their own chemical makeup benefits and they react with the body in their own way. So again, that harvest, the production, the testing, that can vary from company to company and distributor to distributor. And some oils are pure and thoroughly tested. Others may have fillers or preservatives or impurities that may lower the quality of oil and make it unsafe for internal use. So again, do your due diligence. This is very, very important. There's a lot of fake oils out there. So this is an example. This is an oil that I found from a department store. This is actually one of my favorite games that I like to do with my husband is when we go into a store and we notice that they sell essential oils, we love to grab the box and read the labels and see what's on there. So this says here, right? It says 100% pure and natural essential oils. It says it's gonna help you with all these different things. Okay, when we flip that bottle over, and ask, is it safe for internal use? What's, what's going on with there? And there's actually danger warnings on the box of essential oil. So this is orange and lemon, which are things that we would recognize as food. And this is saying that it is flammable, it causes skin irritation. So right there it's saying, don't put it on your skin, don't use it for topical use. That it can cause allergic skin reactions, that it can be fatal if swallowed and enters airway, that it's very toxic to aquatic life, keep out of reach of children and pets and do not ingest or use during pregnancy. This is why we read our labels, because again, it said on that last slide that it was 100% pure and natural. But if it's 100% pure and natural, why are there all these warning signs on here? And it's not safe for internal use. So do your due diligence, read the labels. It's very, very important. doTERRA makes it very simple for us that if the essential oil has a supplement fact, or in Europe, it will say food grade, then we know that it's going to be an oil that is safe for internal use. And if you do not see a supplement fact on that label, say, for example, something like breathe or something like deep blue, we know that those are going to be best used. You're going to get the best benefit with using it topically or breathe aromatically, either one. Deep blue, we typically use more topically. So read the labels. And I love that that's an easy button that we can quickly look. And if we see that supplement fact on our bottle of essential oil, we know that it's safe for internal use. This is a big deal. Very, very important here. So, believe it or not, there are essential oils that you might be already consuming. If you eat vegetables, <laughs> if you eat leaves or roots of plants, if you eat protein like fish and nuts or fruits like the flesh and the rinds, how many times do we use a little bit of the zest when we're cooking something? This is all 
related, right? So you may be eating essential oils and you may not even be recognizing it, but because the essential oils come from plants. So our bodies are designed to metabolize and process natural compounds like plants and fruit. Essential oils are higher concentrations of natural compounds, the part that gives the plants their taste and their smell. So I always think about peeling an orange when that residue that's left on your hands after you peel an orange, that's the essential oil. So what happens when you ingest an oil? When you ingest it, it's actually transported through the gastrointestinal tract of your body, goes into the bloodstream, and this is where it's carried throughout the rest of your body. And they can then be transported to all of the body's organs and even the brain. And they're processed just like the other things that we eat and consume, right? Anything that we eat, it's gonna be metabolized by the liver and the other organs, and then it's excreted. So our bodies are designed to metabolize and process natural compounds like oils, but only at appropriate dosage. And we're going to talk about that and get into more detail of what that means. Yeah, Tiff, possessed is the best. Absolutely. We definitely want to read all those, all those labels, Michelle. Essential oils that are considered to be safe for internal use. So here's a nice list. You can screenshot that. And again, there's some other blends that aren't on this list as well. And when in doubt, always just look on the bottle of your essential oil. This is really important to check, right? But there's a ton here. So basil, bergamot, black pepper, cardamom, cassia, cilantro, cinnamon bark, clary sage, clove, copaiba, or copaiba, coriander, fennel, frankincense, geranium, ginger, grapefruit, heliochrysum, juniper berry, lavender, lemon, lemongrass, lime, marjoram, melaleuca, also known as tea tree oil, melissa, myrrh, oregano, patchouli, peppermint, pedigree, Roman chamomile, rosemary, sandalwood, Hawaiian sandalwood, Siberian fir, and ylang ylang. But again, when in doubt, look on that label of your bottle of oil. Now, also important, you can screenshot this, oils not for internal use. Okay, so the following doTERRA oils should never be taken internally in any amount. These are things like arbor vitae, cedarwood, cypress, Douglas fir, you'll notice that these are a lot of tree, a lot of woodsy oils here. Eucalyptus, spikenard, and wintergreen. And you'll notice that your bottle of wintergreen or the deep blue has that child safety cap on there for this reason, because it kind of smells like candy, smells a little bit like root beer. So we want to be cautious with that. Now, side note, because if you look at your bottle of On Guard, you may notice that eucalyptus is an On Guard. And I just told you that Eucalyptus is an oil that you should not take internally. Here's the thing, doTERRA's eucalyptus oil comes from eucalyptus radiata, which is not intended for internal use. Other doTERRA products like doTERRA On Guard include eucalyptus globulus, which is safe to use internally. So it depends on that plant species and what type of eucalyptus it is. And you'll notice that if you look at your bottle of On Guard and your bottle of eucalyptus, they're gonna be different there. So again, always check and see on the supplement fact there. It's really important. Research. So there are several different models. There are se several different thoughts on internal use of essential oils. The French model for essential oil application actually advocates, advocates the internal use of essential oils to achieve specific benefits. It's backed by prominent professionals in the world of aromatherapy, including several of these wonderful French people. I will not pretend to try to pronounce that. <laughs> I didn't take high school French, but you can see there. And more research is actually becoming available on internal use of essential oils. So here's a little bit of research that I came across and found that actually citrus was kind of interesting. And we talk about D-limonene. We know that that's in our citrus essential oils that they noticed a difference in the gastric mucosa. So this is pretty interesting. It talks a little bit about promoting gastric mucosal healing without any apparent toxic effect and the gastric epithelial organization. And that's kind of interesting, right? Because when we're talking about leaky gut and working our, on our intestinal support and our intestinal tract. I thought this was kind of interesting. And again, I really encourage you guys, do your own research. I found these through PubMed. So you can go to Google PubMed and then type this in. And there's actually a lot of interesting research there. So do your own research. You can look at some things. I just thought that these were kind of interesting going through some of the research. There was an antioxidant activity of rosemary 
essential oil and it's hepatoprotective potential. So hepato is liver. So think liver protective, that it can actually help and support our liver in different ways. And that it was saying kind of interesting that rosemary essential oil, that it can have, and they're noticing this hepatoprotective effects with this. And very interesting stuff, right? Here was one on peppermint oil, and this was encapsulated, so put in a little veggie capsule, but they did this in colonoscopy, so before colonoscopies to kind of help with colonic spasms. And what was interesting about this one is everybody liked it. <laughs> the patients had a better time and a better experience going through that, but also the people that were doing the colonoscopies <laughs> and that they noticed that that was kind of helpful for a little bit of everybody that the person performing the scope as well as the patient noticed more satisfaction and actually helped to decrease discomfort in patients during colonoscopy. So very interesting there to kind of help with any spasming that may be going on in the colon. Oregano essential oil improves intestinal morphology and expression of tight junctions. And again, this is really interesting because we want tight junctions to be working properly in the gut. The tight junctions, they're kind of like the bouncer. They let the good guys in, they keep the bad guys out. Because when you think about it, what we consume is then, as we just mentioned, we talked about earlier, is going into our bloodstream. So we don't want big things like proteins or things that we're eating in our food to go into our bloodstream and basically launch in immune system attack of the body. So this was kind of interesting as well too, that it actually promotes intestinal barrier integrity, probably through modulating intestinal bacteria and a few things. But again, this is really fascinating to me. So again, I encourage you guys to do your own research and kind of check this out, but some interesting things. This one I thought was really interesting for anybody who likes to work out or are runners or are athletes, that this is instant effects of peppermint essential oil on the physiological parameters and exercise performance. And this was really interesting. So they actually just put a drop of peppermint essential oil on the tongue and they noticed that their exercise performance parameters improved. So they measured things like grip force and vertical and long jumps and their VO2 max and their oxygen uptake and respiration. And this actually helped. And a lot of my runners will notice that when they put a drop of oil on their tongue before they go do a workout or over their chest or bottoms of the feet that they know notice that they have a better exercise experience. They feel like their oxygenation is a little bit better. So something to try, right? Something to kind of play with. Very interesting. And then this I found interesting as well too. Oregano oil supports healthy intestinal morphology. So again, a lot of people may have a fear or a misunderstanding thinking that the essential oils internally are going to hurt the gut microbiome and the research is actually showing that it's very supportive that the small intestine is that's that main site that we digest our food right it has the little villi which kind of look like finger like projections you can see the picture there and that helps to increase the surface area to maximize the amount of nutrients that we're absorbing when we consume something and taking something like oregano essential oil was found to increase the height of the villi in an experimental study so kind of interesting right the height of the villi the tight junctions that are going on there so very interesting information. Again, you can take with it what you like and, and do your own research. But those are some interesting things that I found coming across and looking at some of that. But again, always, always safety first. Consider your own personal health history and any health conditions before using essential oils internally. And also consult with your physician and your healthcare team before internal application. It's good that everybody's on the same page, right? Use essential oils in appropriate doses, very important, to ensure safety during internal use. Appropriate doses are gonna vary person to person for a lot of different factors, right? Our age, our size, the oil itself that you're using, what are the benefits that you're hoping to get out of using that? And I do believe in bioindividuality. You're gonna hear me talk about that a lot and that everybody is different, so it's important to listen and honor your body with these things. So here's a nice chart. I'd recommend that you screenshot this so that you have it on your phone. It's helpful to see, but this is going to be discussing appropriate doses for adults versus children. Now, it's not recommended for children to take essential oils internally until age six. 
So if they're under six, maybe go topical. And that's what I love about the oils is that again, with a safe, pure therapeutic grade oil, we can use those as young as babies, but heavily diluted, right? We're talking one to three drops in a 10 ml roller bottle here when we're filling that up. So again, heavily diluted. Six and up can. Now, I will tell you, you got to trust your intuition. You got to trust your mama bear instincts with that. We have had sweet oilers in our oils family that have used oils internally in their children a little bit younger. But again, it depends on the circumstance, the situation. You trust your mama bear instincts. You work with your doctor, all of those things, right? But again, check out those ideal amounts. So for an adult, about two to four drops is going to be an ideal amount and a maximum amount in 24 hours is going to be 12 to 24 drops. And I will tell you that's a lot guys, even when I'm under the weather, even when I'm actively working on something, I don't get near 24 drops in a 24 hour period. And then again, for kids, they're smaller body size for six and up. Again, that's recommended one to two drops, a max of three to 12 oral. Now, when we're talking about Internal use, let me go back. Internal use refers to taking essential oils in a capsule or in a soft gel form. So doTERRA has our little veggie capsules and you can put a couple drops in there and swallow that if you do okay taking those or something like one of the soft gels that are already made for us, like the Ungar Plus soft gels, for example. Oral use is gonna refer to essential oils taken in water or other liquid or under the tongue. So we have the sublingual veins there. We also can talk about sublingual absorption. So that would be like putting frankincense, for example, a drop under the tongue because it allows for quick absorption into the body or putting a drop of frankincense on the thumb and pressing up and holding to the roof of the mouth. Different applications here, right? So again, for an adult, one to three. And for in that 24-hour period, four to 18. Now, dermal, that's going to be topical use. And again, we typically always recommend diluting essential oils for topical use. One, the research is actually showing us that when you put an essential oil directly onto your skin, only about half of that is absorbed and half of that is going to be evaporated into the air. So we always want to use a carrier oil with that and that will actually help to get maximum absorption. Plus it's going to decrease any likelihood that we're going to have a sensitivity with that. So very important there to kind of use. And it's, it's a chart, right? It's guidelines for appropriate doses that we're going to follow with that. So this is a recommended, oh, we got a question. Our ideal are the internal guidelines for each oil. So this is going to be in combination with the oils, right? We don't want to go over a 24, 24 drops of an essential oil combined all together in the day. So think about that. Like if you're doing a veggie capsule and say you're doing like a couple drops of frankincense and lemon and on guard or whatever that is, like look at that together total with that. So we want to stay within these ideal amounts so that you can get the best results with your oils. And this is very important. We don't want to overwhelm the body with too much essential oil and exceed the metabolic capacity of the cells. So again, using one to five drops of a specific oil or blend beyond that, increasing it is no longer going to give you added benefit. And we want to avoid taking too much. There is such thing, too much of a good thing, right? So sticking around that one to five drops of this, this specific oil or blend, and you can repeat every four to six hours, okay? For amounts no greater than 24 hour maximum amount. And again, these are general recommendations. Notice how your body feels. I always recommend starting with less is more, especially with internal use. So if you're just getting started, maybe start with one drop and you can gradually increase. You wanna see how your body does and how your body responds to that. So again, start small, one to two drops, notice how you feel. The dose can be increased as needed, and it's gonna depend, again, on lots of different factors, your age, your size, your health status, and the benefit that you're trying to achieve when taking an oil internally. And it's better to take smaller doses and repeat every four to six hours as needed, right? Less is more, it would be better to do a smaller dose and repeat every four to six hours than take a bunch all at one time. Less is more with this. The oils are very concentrated, right? So we want to be respectful of them. Just because they're from plants and they're natural, we still want to be respectful and be smart and cautious when using them, right? And this is why we talk about safety so much and we educate so much. 
So typically, again, for a daily dose, no more than 20 to 24 drops of essential oil. That's total. Essential oil should be consumed internally within a 24 hour period. And this maximum can be higher or lower depending on the oil in use there. If you get close to the maximum, any dose should be discontinued for an extended period of time to ensure safety, right? So this is where we don't want to do too much, right? Too much of a good thing. So lower doses are recommended when using an essential oil internally over an extended period of time. Again, less is more, less more frequently versus doing a whole bunch all at once. Now, there are strong oils, there are spicy oils, there are hot oils, and some oils should not be placed directly on the tongue or directly in the mouth and swallowed because of their chemical design and how it affects the body. And they're too strong to be taken directly without altering that application somehow. So for these hot oils, and I'm gonna talk about what they are, you can add them to a veggie capsule, two to three drops in a veggie capsule, and add a carrier oil if needed. So something like, say, olive oil, you could top with a little bit of olive oil, or avocado oil, or maybe a little bit of, this here is a liquid coconut oil that you can cook with. Again, read your labels, right? Some fractionated coconut oils, it's gonna say on that label, do not take internally. So this is one that has a supplement fact that I got from Natural Grocers. It's a non-GMO liquid coconut oil that I'll top veggie capsules with as well, or do something like your IQ Mega. So this is your children's Omega-3 fatty acids, it's a liquid and you can actually take a little pipette and or top it off with your veggie capsule that way too. So you don't have to use a carrier oil when taking an oil in a veggie capsule, but I recommend it just so it's a little bit easier on our tummy, right? We dilute our oils when we apply them topically. I like to use a carrier oil when taking essential oils internally in the veggie capsules. And I also recommend taking it with food. You know, just so that's a little bit easier on your tummy. But experiment, listen to your body, see what works best for you. And you can put one to two drops in a recipe. I love to do that. I love to put a drop or two of cinnamon when I'm making my paleo banana muffins, right? Something like that. So you can play and experiment with this. But these are the strong oils right here. So again, use these cautiously because they are very potent. So things like cassia, you'll notice these are the really hot spicy oils. Cassia, cinnamon, clove, cumin, oregano, and thyme. We want to be respectful of these oils, they're very hot. Same thing as we would not put this oil straight onto our skin. You're not gonna put oregano essential oil right on your skin. That is going to be really hot, that's not gonna feel good. We always wanna use a carrier oil, like our fractionated coconut oil for something like that. Same thing, we wanna respect that. It's not gonna feel good if you put a drop of oregano on your tongue, do not do that. That is, again, strong oils. We wanna be respectful of the oils there. So sensitivity, an essential oil may have an effect on one person and not another. Again, bioindividuality, we're all different and it's good to respect that. So essential oils actually do not contain allergens, believe it or not, and therefore cannot cause a true allergic reaction. Now, doTERRA oils, they don't contain any protein molecules. So they, again, they can't, con they can't create a true allergic response in the body because there aren't protein molecules in the essential oils. However, the oils can't cause the allergic reaction, but they can cause a sensitivity, sensitivity reactions in people because we all have different threshold levels with things. And sensitivity can create symptoms that are similar to an allergic reaction. So this is good to be aware of, right? So a sensitivity can cause a response in the skin or the digestive system or respiratory system or other areas of the body. And some signs are gonna include pain or swelling or tenderness in the skin, skin irritation, difficulty breathing, and an upset stomach. So these are things to be aware of. Notice these things, especially if you're doing internal use of essential oils or trying something different for the first time, good to be aware. So if you have a sensitivity that comes up, it's not the same as an allergic reaction. So you might be able to use the oil with a different form of application. So for example, if you notice a sensitivity after internal use, you could try it aromatically or topically instead. 
in that moment. Or you could try diluting the oil or taking a smaller dose to see if it was caused by a high dosage of the oil. So experiment, you can tweak things a little bit. If you experience a sensitivity reaction to an oil in the digestive system, stop. Discontinue the use of that essential oil immediately. Drink lots and lots of water. And if that reaction becomes prolonged or severe, you're going to seek medical attention, right? You're going to go get it checked out. This is very important. So again, we want to always be safe with our oils. We want to be cautious. We want to notice how our body feels. And this is why we start with less, a little bit, and notice how you feel when using those. So to give you an example, this is something that just happened recently. So one of my oilers, she was using Serenity, essential oil in the diffuser and she also applied it topically before bed so she was diffusing it and she put some on her wrists and went to bed and she noticed when she woke up the next morning that she was feeling a little kind of stuffy nose and kind of felt like huh i wonder if i'm having an allergic reaction to this oil but she also noticed that there was no skin irritation her skin was fine everything looked great she just kind of thought hey, I wonder if diffusing that was creating some type of an allergic response there. And we kind of talked about sensitivity and how you can't really be allergic to an oil, but it can bring up a sensitivity around that. And what's interesting to me is usually we see sensitivities with topical use, right, if we didn't dilute and her skin was fine. So this can come up and I, and I bring it up and I've done a video on this. It's on YouTube too about what if you don't, what happens if you don't like the smell of an essential oil. But because of that aromatic response, especially with diffusing, know that it can cause an emotional reaction, okay? Because when we inhale something, it goes in through that olfactory nerve into our limbic system, which houses our memories, and it can have an emotional response, right? This is why we can smell something and be taken back to a time, like maybe you smell something and you're reminded of your grandmother, or a memory from childhood. This can be good or bad. Sometimes we smell scents and it reminds us of a bad experience that we had. So I share this with you because it's come up a couple times and I would challenge you, if you feel like you're having a sensitivity to an oil or reaction to it, especially with aromatic, look it up in the Emotions and Essential Oils book. This is really fascinating and just see if that's resonating with you at all with what's going on and if it is, then like she noticed it with diffusing, stop diffusing the oil, highly, highly dilute it. We're talking one to two drops in a 10 ml roller. Roll it on the bottoms of your feet or an area where you're not gonna smell it, put socks and shoes on, and then come back to it a week later and smell it and see if you notice a difference. And this is where I feel like the oils are so cool because again, it's that mind, body, soul, spirit connection. I came to oils for physical support, but it was actually the emotional piece that resonated with me so much and I can't explain it. I've just seen this happen over and over in our oils family. They'll come back and they'll smell that oil again after a week of heavily diluting and putting it on the bottoms of their feet and they love it. it smells completely different. They're not having those responses anymore. Also know that sometimes it can be the body detoxing, just like when say you're eating a lot of gluten or sugar and you take those foods out of your diet and my clients will often feel sick right? It's like, whoa, the body's coming off of those things and it's causing that reaction. So there's a lot of things to consider, but work with the person that brought you to essential oils, work with your doctor, tune into your body. We just did that class all about trusting in yourself and listening to your body and muscle testing. All of these things are so important to consider, but I just wanted to add that in as a side note because it's really fascinating. So again, remember that there can be an, an emotional component coming up with that as well, but we also want to honor the physical. And again, if you're having digestive issues or anything like that, as, as we've mentioned before, stop the oil immediately, you know, seek medical attention, all of those things. We want to be respectful with the oils and treat them with caution and with care. Okay, let's talk about toxicity. This is the point at which a substance can actually cause harm or damage to the body. Even water, even vitamins and minerals, things that we think that are really healthy for a body that we need can be toxic at high doses. Again, there is too much of a good thing and essential oils have a toxic dose, but it is far above the appropriate usage recommendations. So we showed you guys those recommendations. We kind of said don't do more than 24 drops in a 24 hour period of time. We're talking big, way more excessive doses there. So when I was looking at some of the literature and the research, 
talking about toxicity of essential oils, I saw things where people are taking 30 mLs of an essential oil or 60 mLs of an essential oil. To keep in mind, a 15 mL bottle, this is one bottle, there's 250 drops here. I don't even go through that in a month let alone in one time period. There's a reason why we have an orifice reducer on that bottle of oil and that you can't just go bottoms up and drink the whole thing. That is not appropriate and that can lead to toxicity. So again, we wanna be really cautious with this. When we're reading about these, these cases and things where they're taking excessive, excessive amounts of essential oil, something that I wouldn't even get close to, this is why one to two drops is powerful. Okay, so we want to respect those appropriate usage recommendations there with that. And to also kind of look at concentration. So for example, lemon essential oil. If we talk about the breakdown there, so there's about 3,000 lemons that is needed to make about a kilo of oil and a little over 83 lemons to make an ounce of essential oil. 0.166 lemons for one drop of oil so if you think about one lemon is gonna be equal to about six drops of oil. And again, I like to do a drop, of, or a drop or two of lemon in warm water in the morning or in my water throughout the day, the citrus oils, because they're really cleansing, they help to support detox in the body, things like that. But I think that kind of helps us to put it into perspective because I think sometimes we hear about, oh my gosh, it took this many lemons to make a bottle of essential oil. And then when we look at it and go, okay, one lemon is about six drops of essential oil, that kind of helps me to put it into perspective there. So how to use essential oils internally. So we can cook with them, we can bake with them, with our essential oils, you can add it to water or a beverage. You can, and side note, if you're adding it to water, please, 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 only with glass or stainless steel. Okay, we never wanna put essential oils in plastic and then drink out of that. The essential oils, especially the citrus oils, will actually break down the petrochemicals in the plastic. We don't want that. And that's a good safety tip in general, right? We wanna avoid the BPA and endocrine disruptors that are in plastic. So glass or stainless steel, when adding it to water or a beverage, you can put it in a veggie capsule, as we mentioned, and you could top with a little bit of carrier oil like olive oil, avocado oil, some liquid coconut oil, your IQ omegas, whatever that looks like for you. You can place directly in the mouth and swallow. I will often do frankincense and copaiba under the tongue, a drop of each morning and night. That helps me. But again, we want to note that the oils are potent. Okay, one drop under the tongue is very, very powerful. And again, those hot oils like cassia and cinnamon and clove and oregano and thyme, those should always be diluted. Please do not put a drop of that in your mouth and swallow or rinse with that or anything like that. Those need to be diluted. We need to treat those with care. Those need to be in a veggie capsule. Or you can also take a soft gel. That's kind of an easy button that doTERRA has done for us where we have several things like digest zen and zendocrine and tri -ease, which is lemon, lavender, peppermint, our on guard plus soft gels. Those are already in a soft gel that's easy to take and convenient for us to take internally with that. And this is kind of interesting too. I came across this while researching internal use of essential oils. And I actually don't have a gallbladder. It was removed several years ago. And looking back now that I know what I know about functional nutrition and functional medicine and things, I, I wish I would have known then what I know now, right? And I think I could have dealt with that a little bit differently, but I don't have a gallbladder and you might not have a gallbladder. So this is just kind of some interesting information there that if you don't have a gallbladder, you might not absorb as much of the essential oils as you would like because the, the gallbladder stores bile and it helps absorb fats or lipids. And we know that essential oils are fats, they're lipids, they're an oil. So the liver makes bile and it stores it in the gallbladder and you will have a lower amount of bile without a gallbladder. And it can sometimes be more challenging to absorb fats that you're eating or that you're ingesting in those ways. And ox bile supplements can help to absorb fats. So you can look into that. You can talk to your doctor about taking an ox bile supplement if you've had your gallbladder removed. But you might have a different tolerance. So notice how you feel. Listen to your body. Modify as needed. If you're having a lot of loose stools or issues there, I will say for me personally, I had my gallbladder removed, I believe in 2012, December 2012, and I've been using essential oils since 2014. 
and I've not had any issues with it. I've not noticed any adverse effects personally. I do take essential oils internally every day. I'm putting citrus oils in my water. I'm doing veggie capsules. I do take the soft gels as well. So I personally have not noticed an issue with it, but again, everybody's different. Bio-individuality, see how that works and feels best for your body and listen and honor that. And what I love about the oils is there's other things too, right? You could use it topically. You could do it diffusing it aromatically. You don't have to do things internally. I will say for me personally, internal use of the essential oils has helped me a ton. I feel like it's really supported my health and wellness. But with everything, if you do not have peace about something, don't do it. That's going to be my biggest take home message. I'm sharing information and education and research that I've come across, but as always, if it doesn't resonate with you, if you don't have peace about something, you don't have to do it. So things to remember, we're going to follow the recommended directions for use. We're going to read the labels on our bottle of oil, right? We're going to start with one drop. Less is more. You're gonna make sure that the oils you're using are free of those contaminants, the impurities, in order to protect your body from harm, right? Because we don't wanna be taking adulterated oils internally, you know, oils from the mall, oils from the health food store. Those are not oils that are going to be safe for internal use. They're gonna tell you that on the bottle. This is why I love, know, and trust doTERRA. And when I'm talking about internal use of essential oils, I'm only talking about doTERRA because I know them, I trust them. I could look up the specific chemical testing done on my bottle of peppermint. So use oils that are recommended for internal use. Again, not all essential oils can be taken internally. We talked about the ones that can't, such as wintergreen. Check the labels and the instructions on that. Very, very important. And here's a couple closing thoughts for you, right? Quality matters. Read labels carefully and investigate the quality and the purity and the sourcing of the oils that you're thinking about taking. Again, very, very important. Respect the oils. They're highly concentrated. Proper dosing is key as the essential oils are very potent and we want to be respectful with those. You want to work with your qualified healthcare professional. You want to talk to your doctor about this. Invite a conversation into this. More and more research is being done on internal use of essential oils. And as always, again, if you don't have peace about something, don't do it. I'm not here to try to convince anybody to do anything that they don't have peace about. This is from my own research and what I felt like in making the decision for my body that was good. Remember that you are the CEO of your health and wellness. You get to call the shots, so be empowered to your own research and education and listen to and trust your body and notice how it feels. This is so, so, so important along your healing journey with all of that. Okay, we covered a lot of stuff here. Let me know if you guys are having any questions around this. If anything's coming up, we've got some of you guys on Facebook Live and people on Zoom that you can type in the chat there. Lots to talk about, right? And it's all part of a journey. If you are not already working with somebody with doTERRA, if you're kind of curious about this, if you want to learn more about the oils, I would love to be the person to help and support you along your wellness journey. We do a lot of continued education for our oilers. We actually have a private group that we do a ton in and it's a safe place to ask questions and get support. But I also love to teach publicly, which is why I pop in once a month on this platform to share and to help people. And if you would, please go over to my Facebook page. If you're finding value from this, it's facebook.com forward slash Dr. Laura Ritchie and like that page and you'll be notified of future classes that will be coming up. I've got a website. It's lauraritchie.vpweb.com. Oh, and I actually have a slide with all of this. So if you want to screenshot this, let me share my screen again. Yay. I'm so glad that you guys found this helpful. Here's my resources. So there's the Facebook page. There's my website right there, lauraritchie.vpweb.com. There's my email. I do offer one-on-one -on -one virtual health coaching services. So if you want to dive deeper into something, let me know. This is our Facebook education group, right? The Learning with Dr. Laura group that we have here. And I am in all of the places, right? Instagram, Periscope, Pinterest, you can find me there. I also have a YouTube channel where I share a lot of education and things. And if if this has been on your heart, if you've been following me for a while, if you've been thinking about starting 
with essential oils. We actually have a really cool flash sale that's going on, and this will be through Sunday which is pretty cool in St. Patrick's Day, right? In honor of St. Patrick's Day, it's my sister's birthday on St. Patrick's Day, it's Mark's birthday on Monday, so we thought let's do something really fun. So this is actually my favorite starter kit. It's the top 10 oils, and actually every single one of these oils can be taken internally, except Deep Blue and Breathe. So those are the two that you're not gonna see a supplement fact on there. Um, but this is really amazing. And just as part of the splash sale going on, you actually get Deep Blue Rub and Deep Blue Oil for free, which is an $87 value. I'll be posting more about this in the group, but reach out to me, I'll post a link too. But if you're kind of feeling that that's on your heart, if you are ready this year to take back your health and your wellness and start to be empowered and, and have some tools, right? It's tools. I don't believe that essential oils are a magic bullet. I don't believe that they're going to fix everything, but they're tool to help you both with your physical health and also with your emotional health. I would love to be your oil mentor and guide and support along this journey. With that, we actually set up a Zoom call, a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call, and I walk through and teach you exactly how to use your oils, dilute them so you feel really safe with that. We plug you into a private Facebook group, and then I have some extra goodies and a little welcome packet that will send you as part of this fun flash sale. So reach out to me if I can help and serve. It's your mom's birthday on St. Patrick's Day. Happy birthday. It's a lucky day, right? It's my sister's birthday. I'm so glad that you guys are finding value from this. Yeah, it's always such a pleasure. Okay, well, let's talk about the giveaway. So I want you to post one thing that you learned below in the comments, and the giveaway is just for people in the Facebook group. So if you're on Zoom, head over to the Facebook group and you can enter into the giveaway. But one new thing that you learned below about this class, and you'll be entered to win the Kindle version, the digital version that you can read on your Kindle app of the Emotions and Essential Oils book. I mentioned it in this class. It's a really cool resource, and I want you guys to have it on Kindle so you can pull it up from your phone wherever you are. So we will select a winner one week from today on Friday, March 22nd. So post your learning comment below. You have a week to do that. So we open that up for all of the people watching the replay as well. And you'll be entered to win that. It's one of my favorite resources that you can have on hand here. And then the replay of this class is going to be up until March 31st at 5 p.m. Central Time to watch. So make sure that you take notes before it comes down. Um, Christy, the slides probably will not be posted just because I do have to be compliant. <laughs> There's a fine line that we walk as educators um, with compliance with the FDA and all of those things too. But you can watch the replay as many times as you want and you'll have that there. Um, because I want to be able to share and get this education out there because it is so important, right? Very good. Okay, any other questions, comments, concerns that you can think of? My Zoom people are pretty quiet, but if you have something that you want to say, you can post it in the chat. It is always such a pleasure to be here with you guys. This brings me so much joy to share and educate. If you're in the West Texas area, we're doing some more classes coming up. We're doing a class all about natural solutions for pain. That's going to be on March 26. So you can always check over on my Facebook page and click on events. We also have some upcoming classes too. On the 27th, I will be teaching a class about Copaiba essential oil, diving a little bit deeper into that. We kind of call it the new CBD oil. We'll be talking about why in that. That's going to be my sweet friend Lisa's group. So you can head over to the events and click that and join and be added in there. We're also going to be talking about my sweet, wonderful soul sister friend Lisa Davis because this is a health and wellness lifestyle journey, right? And she is an educator on non-toxic safe makeup. And I love, love, love the crunchy makeup. I get nothing for saying that. It's just truly been awesome. They have amazing, incredible ratings on the Environmental Working Group Skin Deep Database. And she's going to be talking and sharing a little bit with us about essential oils and non-toxic makeup because it's a question I get asked all the time. What about non-toxic makeup? So we're going to be diving deeper into that too. I love when she helps and shares. I love hearing all of your guys' learning comments. This is so fun. Okay, well, if there isn't any other questions, I will let you get back to your Friday. As always, thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of this community and learning with us. This is, you know, sharing is caring and it's all better together. And I really appreciate it. Watch the replay through the end of the month and we'll be back. I'll be back with another health and wellness class for you in next year. Not next year, next month. <laughs> 
in April, right? I love kind of going into these, maybe something about reducing your toxic load or maybe green cleaning, kind of getting that spring cleaning bug a little bit here as we kind of have that on there as well. Oh, Susan, that's a good question. You know, I asked Lisa about that. She's got some thoughts on that. So um, pop in when she's, she's going to be here in this group live on the 27th. And I know she'd love to expand on that for you. Yes. Okay. If you start to implement some of these tips from the class, please tag me on social media. I would love to see what you're doing and how these classes are helping to support you. I'll be back next month. And again, this is in our Learning with Dr. Laura Facebook group. So what you can do, we do keep this as a closed group because of um, compliance and being respectful and we want to be um, appropriate with our essential oil education. But know that you're welcome to share this with people. Well, I don't think you can share it outside of the group, but you can invite people to come into the group and they can watch the replay. It's open to everybody. The group and this education is open to all. So just let them know and they can be here and get this information if they're open to it. Again, thank you so much for coming and being here and spending your Friday morning with me. I'm sending you each lots of love and light and have an amazing rest of your day and a wonderful weekend. Take care, everybody. Bye.